Welcome back everybody, my name is Brendan Dickinson and today we're talking about the Epic Games Launcher, specifically what it is and how to use it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So first things first, what is the Epic Games Launcher? Released in 2018, Epic Games Launcher is a digital distribution platform for video games and software developed by Epic Games. Along with the exclusive titles created in-house by Epic Games, the launcher includes downloads for the Unreal Engine and licensed games from third-party developers. Users of the launcher also periodically receive exclusive free games and discounts. The Epic Games launcher is available for free from the Epic Games website, and it is supported on Windows and Mac OS computers. So if you don't already have the launcher downloaded, I've provided a link in the description to get it. Also, if you would like a video to follow along with, take a look at my how to install Unreal video where I explain step by step how to get the launcher. When you first open the launcher, you'll be presented with a login page. Go ahead and log in with your Unreal account. And if you don't have an account, you can go ahead and click the create account button and then log in with that once it's created. After logging in, you'll see something similar to this. We, however, are going to start with the bottom left area. This is going to be your profile and settings section. There's also this download section. This download section is going to show you what you're currently downloading or what you have queued as well as what was recently downloaded. Then we can get into the settings. Here you can change your language and several other preferences. Most of these preferences are self-explanatory. You can enable offline browsing for looking through the store while offline. Whether you want the launcher to minimize to the system tray, run when the computer starts. I normally turn this off on all my applications. Enable debug logging, which is probably not the most important thing unless you're personally interested in it or have issues with the launcher and need to submit the debug reports to Epic. You can choose to hide your game library, which is an interesting one. Basically, there's this Epic Games Store where you can buy and download games that we'll get into in a minute. And using this, you can actually remove all of that from the launcher. I could see people using this if you're only using the launcher for Unreal Engine development and don't want the store or your library to be clogging up the launcher. When you click on this, it does give you a warning that if you're going to turn this off, you can't interact with your installed games, so keep that in mind. Allow installs while editors are running just means that you'll be able to download stuff while working in the Unreal Engine. You might want to turn this off or manage your installs if you're getting bad performance while in the Unreal Engine editor. Enable cloud saves will let you save game progress on the cloud, so if you have multiple computers, the saves will carry over to those different computers, and you can continue from where you left off. Throttle downloads would only be needed if you have to be careful of how much bandwidth you're using. You'd be able to limit your internet speeds with this. Use proxy would only be needed if you wanted to use a proxy server to connect to the launcher, which I don't think anybody watching this video is going to have to worry about, but you can look that up if you're interested. You can also choose whether you want notifications or not. So the vault cache is basically a collection of marketplace items and sample projects that's going to be unchanged, almost like templates where when you bring one of them into your project, a copy will be created from this vault. So if you want to move this to a separate bigger hard drive, that might be a good way to save some space on your main drive. Troubleshoot is gonna be good to use if you're seeing bad performance or bugs within the launcher. It basically runs some tests and will let you know if something is wrong, or if you don't have the minimum or recommended requirements to run the launcher. Support is going to take you to the support webpage. Show logs will open the directory where your launcher logs are stored, this again is probably something you won't have to deal with unless you're troubleshooting with someone from Epic and they want to take a look at your logs to see more information. There's also a link to the Epic Games Store roadmap, which will show you what changes they're making to the store and what they're planning. The last couple options allow auto updates, which I keep on, and allowing installs while you're playing games, which if you're playing a networked game, you might not want to have your bandwidth taken up by a game download. I usually turn this off. Once you have games installed from the store, you might have additional options available on those games like this, but I wouldn't mess around with these unless you know what you're doing. And that's it for settings. Next we can move on to the profile section. If you click on your name in the bottom left, it's going to bring up a context panel that has these options. Manage account is going to take you to your account page on unrealengine.com where you can edit things like your name, email address, etc. There's a whole lot in this account page online, I'm not going to go through everything now, but if you have anything in your account that you want to change, this is going to be the place to go to. So back to the editor, you also have the option to redeem a code. If you've got a gift card or game code for the Epic Games Store, you can redeem it here. You also have the option to disable single sign-on. By default, you only have to log into the launcher once, but if you turn this off, you'll have to log in every time the launcher starts. 
Personally, I just leave this as is. I'm the only one using my computer, so I don't have to worry about other people using my account. And lastly, you can sign out. And that's about it for the profile and account section. So next, let's talk about the Unreal Engine section. Back to the landing page, we have Unreal Engine. This is the section you'll be using if you're looking for news on Unreal or if you're developing in the engine. The landing page shows you some latest news as well as featured content and blog posts. They might even have some different resources along the right hand side. There are also web links to a lot of the common resources you might be interested in. These include their news feed, their YouTube channel, the forums, and the roadmap. There's also a link to Answer Hub here, but they moved Answer Hub over to the forums under the Q&A section, so at the moment this link doesn't actually work. Next we have the Learn tab, where you can find lots of resources for learning Unreal Engine. Lots of these are sample projects with a decent amount of content for you to jump in and mess around with. If you're just getting into Unreal and want to learn, I would definitely recommend checking some of these out. Then there's the Marketplace. This is going to be different assets from either Unreal or third-party developers that you can buy and download for your own project. This is a great resource for content, and they even have free assets that rotate out every month. Sometimes these assets are worth hundreds of dollars, so I would definitely keep an eye out for anything you think you might need in the future. The Marketplace is just about anything you could need for creating a game. It's got 3D models, sounds, materials, VFX, libraries, it even has some complete feature sets like procedural level generators. Also if you start developing for Unreal Engine and you find that you've made something that you could sell, you can even submit your own content to the store, although the review process is pretty strict. Next we have the library tab. This is going to show you the different versions of Unreal Engine that are installed as well as the different projects you have and any additional content that you've downloaded from the marketplace and you can find this in the vault. The next tab is Twinmotion. Twinmotion is software that uses the power of Unreal Engine for creating high quality images, panoramas, and 360 degree VR videos for those in architecture, construction, and landscaping. So if you're in that group, I would definitely give Twinmotion a try. The last tab is UE5, which has a bit more information about the latest version of the engine, Unreal Engine 5, and gives you early access to start using the newest features. You'll find links to the documentation as well as some learning resources for this specific version. Next, let's jump over to the store panel. You can think of this like Epic's version of Steam. It is a game marketplace where you can find lots of the same games and even some that aren't even on Steam. You can browse games and filter them. There's also a link to any news pertaining to the store. You can friend others and create a wish list of your favorite games. One thing that I would recommend is under the Discover section, we can scroll down and see a free game section. This rotates out quite frequently, and you can get lots of very good games that would normally cost a decent amount for free. If you claim them during the window in which they are free, you'll have them for the duration of your account, even after they're not free anymore. Scrolling down, you can see that we have featured and popular games, and you can search specifically for the games you're looking for. Under your profile in the top right, you can see several of the same links that were under the other profile section with some additions including your achievements, coupons, and the refund policy as well as some extra stuff. The last section in the Epic Games Launcher is your library. You can think of this exactly like a Steam library. It's pretty simple. The games that you've bought or claimed and through this section you can install and launch those games. On the left, while you're in the store or library, you'll also see the quick launch section, which you can install and launch games from as well. That about wraps it up. I hope you understand the Epic Games launcher a little bit better. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, have fun creating and I'll see you next time.